celebrating the art of interruption. Now on BBC One for just a minute. exciting, engaging and sometimes impossible game in which I ask my four guests to speak on the subject that I give them and they try and do that without hesitation, repetition or deviating from the subject. Let us now meet those four talented people who are going to play the game today. And first of all, we welcome that delightful and talented actress Lisa Goddard. Beside her, that engaging Scotsman Ken Bruce. And on my left, the comedian Richard Morton. And beside him, writer and longest after-dinner speech record holder Giles Brandreth. Please welcome all four of them. Thank you. <clears throat> they will score points or lose points as a ch challenge, and you'll see the rest of the game as we proceed. And we begin the show today with Lisa Goddard. Lisa, who better? Oh, subject, a bit on the side. Can you tell us something about that subject in this game, starting now? My favourite bit on the side is Mrs Christie's cucumber pickles. Her husband has a cheese stall in Fakenham Market. I go every Thursday to stock up on these extraordinary comestibles. They're wonderful with cheese or ham. <laughs> And, uh, Giles, you I have a challenge. I was going to challenge the repetition of cheese, but then I realised, of course, deviation. They can market its afternoon closing on a Thursday. <laughs> 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 How do you know? How often have you been to fake in a market? You'll discover in a moment when I tell you about my bit on the side. All right. <laughs> Oh, I see. Anyway, it was a correct challenge. Whoever gets a correct challenge gets a point for doing that. He takes over the subject, and there are 47 seconds left. A bit on the side with you, Giles, starting now. A bit on the side could either be a horse's snaffle on the dresser, or, as in my case, Lisa Goddard. In my <laughs> fantasy, I have lusted after this woman for years. And, uh, Brick, yeah, you've challenged. This is patent deviation. Why? Because he's lusted after Lisa Goddard. It's not, it's not right for a man in his position, nor a woman, <laughs> a woman of this delicacy, to be lusted after I, by that. Reveal, he can reveal his fantasies in this show if he wants to, but he's not given way to the temptation, as I happen to know, because his, wi his wife, Michelle, has... Oh, he's, she's got the first love of his life. Let us carry on with Giles. Uh, a point for an incorrect challenge. Thank you, Nicholas. Excellent challenge. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, there are still 36 seconds, a bit on the side, Giles, starting now. Put your hands on Nicholas your is quite right that my wife, Michelle, would not necessarily approve, but my mother-in-law would be delighted because she has always admired this particular uh, actress. Lisa, why have you of wood. Oh. She's getting tough again and aggressive, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. um, Lisa, yeah. you have the subject, and a correct challenge, of course, a point right. for that. 28 seconds, a bit on the side, starting now. My motorcycle has a bit on the side. It's a side car in which I put my dogs. I close the top and off we go into the wide blue yonder, up mountains, down the other side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the beginnings of a hesitation there, indeed, the completion of a hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> So it must have been a hesitation if she started and finished it. was. I was trying to put it in a sort of poetic way. I know. I well, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I think it was just about long enough to be hesitation. I will grant you the benefit of the doubt and try and re redress the balance if the opportunity arises. So you have another correct challenge, another point, and you have a bit on the side, and you have... Uh, no, you don't. You have the subject of a bit on the side, <laughs> and you have 17 seconds starting now. When you think of the great lovers of history, Romeo and Juliet, Troilus and Cressida, Andy Pandy and Luby Lou, I hope that you would also... <laughs> think of Giles Brandreth and the person that he is now gazing at, for whom he has the hots in a very big way. I can tell you, I don't think I have perspired like this or felt quite the lump in my throat. <laughs> Whoever is speaking when the whistle goes gains an extra point. On this occasion, it was Giles Brandreth. We should also give one to Lisa Goddard, I think, for blushing so much. Like <laughs> anyway, uh, at the end of the round, let's see the score. Giles Brandreth, you might not be surprised to discover, has got most points. In fact, he's in a strong lead. And Ken Bruce, will you take the next round? Skipping. 
Will you tell us something about skipping in just a minute, starting now? My six-year-old daughter recently took part in a skipping competition at school, and I'm delighted to say that she managed 47 consecutive skips without interruption. I was tremendously proud because it is in the genes at school when I was a boy. <laughs> And, uh, Giles? The second school. <gasps> yes, the second school. I know it's a difficult game, oh, yes. isn't it, Ken? And, Giles, another correct challenge. Skipping is with you. 46 seconds starting now. Skipping was indeed my favourite sporting activity. Skipping football, skipping cricket. <laughs> indeed, <laughs> when I eventually had to give up skipping rugger, I came off the playing field and went down in the showers on my knees and said, Good Lord, thank you for sparing me that kind of physical activity. Now, of course, that I have a little bit of en bon point, my poor darling... Uh, 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 Richard brought new challenge. I'd just like to say I am playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what en bon point is. <laughs> well, you don't know because you haven't got one. You're okay. so slim. <laughs> yes. oh, An en bon point is a little bit of a tummy. Thank you. And, 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 and I've got it and you haven't. Fair play. Mm. Forgive me. No, you don't have to forgive you. We'd love to hear from you, Richard. Thanks, so, have you got a challenge within the rules of just a minute? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, give him a bonus point, because we loved hearing from him. So, Richard, a bonus Thanks. point for your... Sorry, Giles. Carry on. No, no, no. It's, it's lovely to come on here and discover things new, isn't it? Yes, I have an en bon point to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> One day, I too will have an... How did you say that, Giles? No, en bon point. En bon point. No, I think, I think with the genes you have, you probably will never have one. Who does your tailoring, by the way? Uh, Mother Care. Do you Cheeky. Know? <laughs> 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 okay. Anyway, uh, here's a point, and of course, Giles was interrupted, so he gets a point for being interrupted. Keeps the subject, and there are 23 seconds available. Skipping, still with you, Giles, starting now. On my 25th wedding anniversary, my dear darling child bride said to me, what are you going to give me for this special occasion? And I said, I'd like to give you anything that you want. <laughs> Said I would. Uh, Ken, why are you challenged? He's been giving far too widely. Two gives. Ah. Uh, two gives. Yes, <laughs> right. So, Ken, well, listen, you've got the subject. You have 13 seconds on skipping starting now. Many of our best boxers are, of course, wonderful skippers. I'm thinking of Lennox Lewis, Evander Holyfield, Frank Bruno. Why are you challenged? I think Evander Holyfield is not one of ours. Isn't he American? Yes. Well, this is taking a purely British and rather insular point of view, if you don't mind my saying. I'm talking about our best boxers, as in the entire world's wow. best boxers. I think probably that's what you intended, but within the, the rules of just a minute, I think it could be interpreted as a form of deviation. It could and be interpreted, it, but I hope you wouldn't interpret it that way. <laughs> well, as I also have the hots for Lisa Goddard, I think oh. I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How many clothes do I have to take off to do well in this program? <laughs> so Don't look at me, Ken. I'm not taking any off. Lisa, yeah. I think you have a deviation there. Six seconds. Skipping, starting now. Skipping meals is a very good way of losing weight. I have frequently tried this method. <laughs> Oh, Lisa Goddard was then speaker as a whistle and gained that extra point for doing so, and she's moved forward. She's in second place behind Giles Brandreth, who is our leader, and Richard Morton. Will you take the next subject? Yes. Nannies. Oh, there's a lovely subject. You can take it so many different ways, couldn't you? Tell us something about nannies, starting now. Nannies should be buxom, big-breasted, bosomy ladies who can <laughs> nurture and cherish a small boy till at least the age of about 25, I reckon. <laughs> Make him feel as if he had grown up in the heart and soul of a woman because men lack so many of the qualities that women can teach them. Such. Uh, yes, Ken. Um, I, he didn't actually repeat woman, he said women, didn't he? Oh, That's well right, spotted, yes. Ken. You've yes. corrected yourself. Sorry, eh? sorry, I, I said know. nothing. Yeah. Yes, I didn't so say he didn't say can, Yes, he said woman and okay. women, and so an incorrect challenge. So, okay. a point to you, Richard, and you keep the subject of nannies starting now. Such activities as housework, the hoovering, the washing up, the cleaning, the putting the rubbish out in an evening. The even placing down of the toilet seat would be things that men could possibly learn from women in a big way. Yes, Lisa got that. Repetition of women. Mm. We did oh, have a repetition of the women there, yes. The women. More but women, the better, eh? <laughs> <laughs> We're getting... I'm just following what Giles started, really. <laughs> <laughs> 34 seconds available, Lisa, for nannies starting now. Looking after babies is quite simple. Keep one end full and the other empty. As a working mother, of course, I had to employ nannies all the time. I had a succession of Spanish girls, lovely in their way, but parties, moustache removing... <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid it's just insulting to the good foreign people who will be watching this. <laughs>
I mean, really, Spanish women with moustaches? How insane! <laughs> Lisa, you get a point for being interrupted. You'll keep the subject. 20 seconds on nannies starting now. And leg waxing. They're terrible drivers, too. We gave them a car and they smash it up. It was known eventually as the Spanish bumper car. Um, repetition of Spanish. Yeah. Spanish, yes, you had Spanish girls before, now Spanish bumpers. <laughs> and, Giles, you've got in there with ten, no, ten and a half seconds on nannies starting now. They're changing guards at Buckingham Palace. Christopher Robin went down with Alice. So the first lines of a famous poem by Alan Alexander Milne that celebrates perhaps one of the most famous nannies in the history of the world. Easy. Josh Banbury speaking is a whistle rain game. That extra point. He's increased his lead at the end of the round, and it's your turn to begin, Giles. And after talking about celebrations, the next subject is. Celebrations, and it's your turn to begin. 60 seconds, if you can use it, starting now. In our family, the best celebrations are always ones involving the pets. We are enthusiastic about our four-legged friends. Indeed, our French <coughs> poodle... Uh, yes, Ken? He hesitated slightly. I was enough say. to say hesitation, Ken, so you have a correct challenge and you have 50 seconds. Tell us something about celebrations in just a minute, starting now. The Scots are the most famous celebrators in the history of the world. On Hogmanay, you show me a crowd full of... Scottish people, and they will be going at it, hammer and tongs. The whiskey will be flowing, the splutter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I think the whiskey's flowed. Hey. I, think. <laughs> I think it got through the thought of all that whiskey, Ken, and you're gone. Oh, my goodness, me, I can see you there. Mm. Hogmanay, oh, yes, right. Ah. Hesitation for that. Yes, point. I agree. I agree yes, with you. Thank yes. you. Yes. you, 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 got, you okay. got your point, and you've got the subject, and you've got 35 seconds starting now. In the northeast of England, we always celebrate by having a tattoo done in a really painful place. <laughs> <laughs> so I had mine done in Swindon. You mustn't ride. Well, <laughs> I know, it's just your face. It wasn't so much hesitation as pause for applause. I know, yeah. <laughs> well, no, he paused for the laugh. You should actually, yeah. in just a minute, it's made you have to ride the laugh. But do, I'm you... so pleased to get one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I just carry on because you. I think actually, having got the laugh, you pause for the applause as okay, well. well but, bless you. You. but Ken, a correct challenge. So we're back with you. Celebrations, and there are 23 seconds starting now. In 23 seconds, I hope to be able to celebrate the winning of a round on just a minute. Before that, though, I want to look ahead to some of the great celebrations almost upon us. The millennium, that ending of a thousand years of history, will be with us in a matter of a few short months. Um. Technically, the next millennium doesn't begin till the 1st of January 2001. <laughs> and it's not a few short months, it's about a year and, and you know, a few seven short months. Compared to. But, but a on the other years, hand, no, it it can, I'm going to support this one because yeah, he's talking about celebrations, and I think we're all, at least most of us, are going to celebrate the millennium. Uh, on this New Year's Eve. So I think I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, Ken, and say you keep the subject because that's what you're good on chair. celebrations. A good chairman, is it? Oh, well, good I see you Very good. Have <laughs> Nine seconds starting now. Put me in a room with a bottle of whiskey and a boiled egg. Um, yes. I'm afraid whiskey. And whiskey uh, again. Yeah. Yeah. So got a one track mind, this man. He's a Scotsman. Scots, isn't it? We isn't love it? our whiskey, don't we? Love we? Their whiskey. Right. So, Lisa, you have six seconds on celebrations starting now. I absolutely love celebrations birthdays, weddings, funerals. You'll find me cooking. <laughs> 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 Remember this cover, what she did at funeral yeah. for that <laughs> But she was speaking when the whistle went again. That extra point for doing so. So Lisa got out as move forward. She's in second place behind Giles Brand with our leader, followed by Richard Morton and Ken Bruce in that order. And Lisa got out. We're back with oh, you right. to take uh, the start. Uh, fishnet tights. I'm not quite sure why they thought of this Steady. one. Steady. <laughs> <laughs> Talk on fishnet tights if you can in just a minute, starting now. I absolutely love fishnet tights. They make one's legs look so long and slender and firm. I'm thinking of Sid Charisse here. No showgirl in Las Vegas, despite what little they may wear, would be considered... Oh. <laughs> Giles. I could <laughs> listen to her. Fumbling <laughs> <laughs> all day. <laughs> You have a correct challenge, and you have uh, 49 seconds to tell us something about fishnet tights starting now. 
The equivalent of putting bromide in one's tea when it comes to fishnet tights is to conceive of Nicholas Parsons wearing them. <laughs> and indeed, I have done just that, not simply as a fantasy, but in reality. Because in the successful musical, The Rocky Horror Show, now celebrating its quarter of a century, the host of our programme appears, <laughs> believe it or not... Lisa. Sorry, he hesitated. He did fall over. I know, I was rather enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa, you had a correct challenge of fishnet tights, 29 seconds available starting now. Fishnet tights are also very useful when fishing. My great uncle Tatton hooked a huge salmon and he'd forgotten his landing net. Got his mistress to remove her fishnet tights, scooped up this huge fish. And, uh, yes, who challenged? It's just the way she's holding her arms. <laughs> just the way she's doing it. So I'm asking for a repetition of that physical movement. <laughs> So you interrupted her, and you didn't have her for the repeating of the word yes. fish. So it's too late now. Lisa, you were interrupted. You have an incorrect challenge. So you get up on the point. You have 15 and a half seconds. Fishnet tights starting now. And landed this great beast on the shore. Uh, Richard. Repetition of the word great. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Yes, it was great before. So, Richard Morton, tell us something about fishnet tights. Have you ever worn them, by the way, yourself? Uh, no, thank no, you. Right. <laughs> well, uh, talk on the subject. 13 seconds now on fishnet tights, uh, uh, Richard, starting now. Wouldn't it be marvellous if a group of master criminal haddocks stole some stockings because then in the tabloid press we would see the fantastic headline, Fish Net Tights. Oh. <laughs> this would be a great day for all our oh, future yeah. readers around the country. Very and I, for one, would like to read this story as I'm a big fan. Has this the whistle has gone. went 20 <laughs> minutes ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to let you go on because I was enjoying it. Right. And the audience was well. So, Richard Morton, not only was getting the last, but he was also speaking as a whistle when getting that extra point for doing so. And he has leapt forward, <gasps> but he's still in fourth place. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> it's Ken Bruce, but out in the lead there, it's Lisa Goddard, just one behind our leader, Giles Brandreth. And, Lisa, that was your subject. Ken Bruce is now with you. Pandora's Box. What a good subject. Talk about it in this game, if you can, starting now. Fred Pandora was possibly the greatest cricketer I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> And Pandora could face W.G. Grace or Ian Botham if he'd been alive at the time with equal respect. The only thing he worried about was his own protection. The other Pandora I'd like to speak to you about is, of course, the Pandora who was given a box by Zeus, the great god, which contained every evil known to man and, indeed, woman in the world. And this was to be opened, and those terrible... <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> 29 seconds, it's difficult, you'll have to go oh, for 60 seconds. Oh. 29 is great, but you challenge, yes. Hesitation, Giles. So. There are 31 seconds on Pandora's box starting now. Pandora Twistleton Wickham Fines is a gracious hostess and one of the most beautiful and generous people I know. <laughs> to be in her box at the Royal Opera House <laughs> or indeed at the theatre is something of a treat. She took me recently to see Romeo and Juliet a remarkable ballet, which was spoilt rather by the Japanese... Um, Ken, you've challenged. Did we not have a ballet earlier on? No, it was the opera before. No, they went to the ballet this time. Well, they're much the same. I, don't have... <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have challenged right away for fickleness, because he's gone off Lisa Goddard, now he's on to Pandora. Oh. Oh. Is... <laughs> but uh, you didn't. So, no, I'm sorry, he did have the opera before, and it was the ballet this time. So, Giles, an incorrect challenge. You've still got the subject, and you have eight seconds starting now. I discovered that Pandora, in fact, is of Spanish descent, and has had her facial hair removed. <laughs> and as a result of this, she is the most beautiful... <laughs> Oh, so Giles Brand was speaking as the whistle went, gained another point and has increased his lead at the end of the round. And it's Richard Morton. It's your turn to begin. Fan mail. Oh, I'm sure you've had plenty of that, Richard. Tell us something about fan mail, your fan mail, anybody's fan mail in this game starting now. Personally, I feel very sorry for the postman who must walk to Nicholas Parsons' house every day with curvature of the spine, a double hernia, arms like chimpanzees, <laughs> lugging the great big bag that is full of the hate mail that must be sent <laughs> to Nicholas <laughs> after these shows. I meant fan mail, of course. And that's what... Oh, yeah. Why are you trying to charge? Well, no, I was going to say repetition of mail, but the word mail is in the... Mm, and also, yes. it was... Okay. 
Yes. It doesn't matter. It's, yes. it's how it sounds, not yeah. how you spell. Yeah. Yeah. So, an incorrect challenge, Richard. And talk on the subject <laughs> of fan mail. 43 seconds starting now. Despite my lifelong ambition to have an embonpoir, my <laughs> status as fan mail is simply all I'm accorded as... Uh, who's Charlie? Giles, yes. Well, it was getting a bit of a muddle, and we have heard embonpoir pronounced correctly, incorrectly, <laughs> eight <laughs> times so far by him. I know, but he's only just discovered the yeah. word, so he's allowed to pronounce any way he wishes mm. until he's practised it a bit more. <laughs> so I disagree with the challenge, so Richard what? keeps going. Yes! <laughs> okay. I think we've got a few fans out yeah, there, Richard. Uh, oh, they love you on Bonpoir. So you carry on with 36 seconds on fan mail starting now. As a lifelong Newcastle United supporter, the only status I am accorded is fan mail. Due to the fact that the fan... <laughs> <laughs> that was hesitant. I think it was hesitant. That was hesitant. <laughs> uh, Giles, correct challenge. You have fan mail and 28 seconds starting now. It's pretty damn incredible, but I do have a fan, and he is male. <laughs> and what is rather sad is that I think his interest in me is unhealthy. He sends me poetry, fortunately not penned by himself, but by people like Keats, Yeats, Wordsworth. Um, Ken. Oh, Yeats was a long time coming there. It was such a hesitation, I it think. It was a little time. No, I have to be fair. All right, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I gave it to Giles last time. I balanced the, the things this way. Right. So, yes, it wasn't quite, but you've got it. Benefit of the doubt. Nine, no, 11 seconds on fan mail, Ken, starting now. Only today I received a touching letter which read, Dear Ken, I have followed your career as a broadcaster with great interest. I would love to be as good as you one day. Your sincerely love, <laughs> Nicholas Parker. <laughs> <laughs> The whistle almost defeated the payoff, but I hope they heard it, and he keeps speaking as the whistle went. Giles Brandreth is still in the lead at the end of that round. And Giles, your turn to begin. The subject, my second cousin once removed. That's an involved subject, but talk on it if you can. 60 seconds starting now. My second cousin once removed has now been removed permanently. In that, he is no longer with us. In fact, this is true, he was the last person to be beheaded for treason in this country. His name, Jeremiah Brandreth, and he was a Luddite who, in 1812, led a demonstration near Nottingham that was put down by the government of the day. He was hung, drawn, quartered, and eventually his head was held up and the axeman said, Behold the head of a word I have used before and therefore cannot repeat. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lisa, what was, your, me, what, was your, <laughs> what was your challenge? A uh, repetition of head, but it was so good. Well, yeah, yeah, it was. I, I thought Such you had I'm holding this position for you. Thank you. It was like being in Braveheart, that wasn't it? Like being in Braveheart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the head was a repetition. So, Lisa, you had the subject of my second cousin once removed, 27 seconds starting now. My second cousin once removed is a lovely girl, and she taught physics and chemistry at St Paul's Girls School in London, but sadly had to return to her native New Zealand only two years ago because she felt it was healthier for her children than living in London. Q, in fact, near the bridge. She was worried about <laughs> 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 She was over the bridge and into the water. She was, yeah. <laughs> and you cleverly got in with only seven seconds to go on my second cousin once removed, starting now. My second cousin once removed, Pickford's, helped him. There was a big van outside <laughs> of the house. It was filled Very with good. all the furniture he could get. Very well done. Very well done. Very well done. So, Ken Bruce literally kept going to the whistle and gained that extra point. They're both moving up. That's he and Richard Morton on Lisa Goddard and Giles Brandreth in that order. Giles is just in the lead, and Lisa, we're back with you to start. The subject, Bloody Mary. Well, talk on that subject, if you can. Just a minute, starting now. Bloody Mary was the daughter of Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon. She was given in marriage to the Dauphin of France at the tender age of two years old. She came to the throne in 1553 and ruled for six years. During that time, 300 Protestants... Uh, Ken, you challenged. It's a repetition of years, I think, was there not? Years of age and, uh, 
something else? Yes. <laughs> Forgotten now, so long ago. But yes, yes, you're yes, right. Yes, you're right, you're right, yes, Ken. Well, right. listen, yes, that's yes, right. There were too many years there. Bloody Mary is with you. There are 46 seconds, Ken Bruce, starting now. There's a character in the musical South Pacific called Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary is the girl for me. Now, ain't that too damn bad? I could sing more. <laughs> uh, 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 Richard, you challenge. It was just putting Ken out of his misery. <laughs> 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 I thought you'd say put the audience out of there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so what is your, within the rules of Just a Minute, what's your challenge? Um, there wasn't really a, a genuine one. No, so I'll tell you what, we Was there do. a tiny bit of deviation, do you think? No, no, no I don't think so. Repetition? We, we, no, no. Hesitation? En bon poire? En bon poire? Did he have an en We'll give you a bonus point because we enjoy the challenge, Richard. Okay, thank but you But you have a point for being interrupted, Ken. You keep the subject, Bloody Mary, 36 seconds, starting now. The perfect Bloody Mary involves a tall glass, a little ice, a certain amount of vodka, and then it should be topped up with preferably V8, which is a vegetable juice comprising carrot, celery, a touch of spice, and after you've mixed all that up, put in a slice of lemon, followed by Worcestershire sauce, and then some of that delicious Tabasco stuff. Stir it all up, knock it back, lie on your back, and I've repeated back to some... Oh, yeah. uh, who challenged that? Richard? Repetition of the word back, I'm afraid, Ken. I Although know. you mix a fantastic cocktail. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was reading the bell to all Order yeah. one, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Over here. All right, we'll my house. Go on. So we're back to Ken's place afterwards for the Bloody Marys. But Richard Morton, you had a correct challenge, and you take over Bloody Mary, and you have 11 seconds in which to do it, starting Ooh. now. I once walked into a bar in my native Newcastle and asked for a. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Frankly, we have heard enough about no. Newcastle. No. <laughs> we have heard enough about Newcastle. No. Yes, we have. No, we have. All right, then I'll Newcastle, change it. Right, Newcastle, then. Newcastle, Newcastle. Okay, I'll change it, I'll change it. Okay. No, why you can't change it. You can do whatever you like. He keeps a talking, it's repetition. <laughs> this is oh, not... you and Lisa, you and Lisa, you and Lisa. Yes, I want to talk about Lisa, if you don't mind. <laughs> He can mention Newcastle as often as he likes, yeah. but he, as long as he doesn't do it in the same round. Mind you, he does have all, go on a bit about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll change it to um, another thing. Right, let's right. go. Right, Newcastle then. Right. You're going to go, but I'll you, you're Newcastle now. Uh, not uh, Liverpool, Newcastle. No. <laughs> well, that was well, Pakistan, Newcastle. wasn't it? <laughs> you know what? You know what? I did this once before because I, I, we worked up there. Yes. I did a point of mine. I tell them about this last time I was on the show. I did a point of mine up there. And I used to I, you know, last time you were on the show, I was telling you that. I was going to have one. And all the bears came on the show. I was being the dame. I was being the dame up there. And they didn't realize. They said, I couldn't hear something wrong with them. Couldn't you be there? Where did you come from? They said, I come from Dune there. What I said there. No, you've got. Um, <laughs> So he didn't repeat yeah. Newcastle in that round, though he okay. would like to have done, I'm sure. So, Richard, I'm still with you with seven seconds on Bloody Mary starting now. The toughest pub I've ever walked in in my life was the one in which I ordered half a lager and lime and the barman said, we don't do cocktails here. <laughs> <laughs> We're speaking as the whistle wind. Gain that extra point for doing so. We have more time to play this delightful game. Let me give you the final situation. They all got lots of points, but they all contributed so much it would be fair if they were all equal. But actually, they were. These are Goddard, Ken Bruce, and Richard Morton were all equal in second place, but a few points ahead of them was Giles Brand Associate. Giles, Thank you. you're the winner. Today. Am I right that Lisa Goddard is the first prize? <laughs> <laughs> Say thank you to our four intrepid players again. These are Goddard, Ken Bruce, Richard Morton, and Giles Brandreth. From them, from me, Nicholas Parsons. Hope you've enjoyed just a minute. Be with us next time you play this delightful game. Goodbye.